Hey folks, I'm Trevain Glory, and welcome to part 3 of my Babrus campaign in Steel Division 2. So, we've fought a few battles around Babrusk. Uh, we attacked into the rear here, managed to disorganise uh, these units, two infantry regiments and a, a wreck unit. Then we attacked up here, these, this tank group attacked the uh, Germans, and they managed to somehow slip behind us, which was a bit unfortunate. Um, this is their only avenue of escape, uh, and I've been trying to cut that off. But anyway, uh, so what we're going to do now is attack uh, into Babrusk itself, attack across here, and uh, I think we might attack the artillery group, take out the support weapons before we concentrate on the infantry. And I don't know if I want to use a motorised battalion or the HQ. Motorised battalion does have tank a tank company, um, and we have Valentines, um, the infantry tank that doesn't carry much anti-infantry weapons. I only get 15 high explosive shells. Anyway, so I think probably want to use the uh, infantry regiments and the tanks rather than the artillery. The uh, what do you call it? HQ unit. Um, it's got uh, anti-aircraft gun and it's got some mortars but not much in the way of artillery. So I think we will go with the infantry and the motorised battalion. Do we have any anti-tank in here? We do have a wee bit. Uh, so let's attack with uh, you, you and you. Yeah, let's go with that and fight the battle. Okay, so I'm going to control all the units this time. Uh, makes it quite a big task, but I'm playing this game the way that I would play Theatre of War or Combat Mission or something of that nature. Uh, so it's manageable controlling all the units. I just go on slow speed, I use active pause whenever I want to contemplate the situation. Uh, so one of the German infantry units is coming in in phase B, which is good. Uh, we're all coming in on phase A. Let's go ahead. So here's our battlefield. We've got some high ground here right in front of us that I want to take. It's more high ground up to the rear in each flank. So I think what I want to do, obviously I'm going to take this high ground. Uh, so I think I'll probably bring in the armour on the left hand side for most, the most part, use infantry to hold the high ground and give us overview of the valley in between. So I'll send one infantry uh, battalion up onto the high ground and probably just set a blocking force there. Uh, maybe we have some anti-tank units covering that road to the right hand side. Uh, we'll send another force up the road in the middle towards the town. And, as I said, the main attacking force up the left-hand side. Uh, probably send the tanks up there uh, to the rear area and then swing around in behind and cut off the reinforcement routes. So, yeah. And maybe get some tanks up on the high ground so that they can overlook that valley. And I think that's us. So to start off the battle, moving up my forces on the left hand side, uh, we've got an infantry platoon, some mortar, machine gun and a uh, armoured car, and we spot a German anti-aircraft unit. So I get the troops out of the truck straight away so that they don't become a target, and bring up the, the BA-10, the armoured car, to try and take out the German half-track. And it manages it, one shot. And with that, the advance can continue. I kept the recce section in the half track there. This is the road in the centre, uh, and it's a similar sort of composition uh, infantry platoon, uh, recce section, armoured car, machine guns, mortars, and there's a tank coming in as well. And I'm going to deploy to the right of the road for the main part, and then advance up towards the wood just ahead of us. It seems to be clear. Uh, but I'm just going to let everything get into position and get the mortars unloaded. 
Over on the right, we're moving up onto the high ground, and again we've got an infantry platoon, a couple of mortars, and some recce units. And again, we're going over to the right there, we'll set up the blocking force. I've got a couple of 45mm anti-tank guns that we'll put into the tree line, and they can keep an eye on the road to the right, and everything else is going to advance towards the woods in front of us. We've also got a recce section coming over the road on the extreme right hand side to give me some vision up the flank of this hill. So moved forward and discovered uh, Flak 41. I managed to just get the infantry out of the truck before it opened up on us and I pulled them back and got my mortars uh, set up to smoke off that, uh, that valley over there. We also started to take fire from a machine gun. Uh, you can see it ahead of us in the second load of trees. So I reposition, I retasked the mortars to focus on that, and I used the mortars in the centre uh, to fire on it as well. You can see my Valentine getting up into position, and my infantry is advancing towards the woods there. So the focus for now is on this uh, German machine gun. We start taking fire, uh, and I've got into the habit, <laughs> eventually, of a few rounds from the mortars and then reposition them straight away. So we managed to avoid losing any units from the artillery fire. Uh, my own artillery uh, did a decent job in the machine gun, managed to send it into retreat, uh, pinned it down, and then the weight of fire uh, eventually managed to eliminate it. And with that, I reckon it's clear to start sending the infantry forward so they can probe up towards the forest. It seems to be empty. And I've sent the armoured car up on the road to the left as well, just to get a look in behind there. On the right, a, a recce unit, a BMW, motorcycle sidecar came in. The anti-tank guns were about to open up on it when the recce squad that I've got in the forest used its bazooka to take it out. You can see the uh, there's a smoke landed right on top of the Flak 41 over there. So we're moving up. I've brought in a unit from the mechanised or the motorised battalion. Uh, they've come up to the left hand side of the forest there and we've discovered another Flak 41 in the tree line so the mortars are now focusing on that and it was the units over here uh, in the centre that discovered that uh, 88 mil. Uh, so I've left the armoured car in there behind the forest to keep it protected and the Valentine is well back out of harm's way. Well, uh, I use one of the mortars here to lay some smoke in front of the anti-tank gun and then use my other mortars to try and paste it. There's a German mortar in the road to the deer there but with the Flak 41 smoked off I decide it's safe to push my infantry up into the forest. And over on the left hand side, I'm fairly sure there's going to be something up on that high ground to the left. It looks like an obvious spot, so I'm holding back my mortars and I'm holding back the, the tanks essentially. On the high ground to the right, I've discovered another German machine gun, sending these guys into some sort of dance. Uh, but we've got the BA-10 there, and I really love the graphic on this. You can even see the shell case get ejected from the back of the turret. So the way it fired goes in the machine gun and another German unit had appeared on the forest to the right but we've got enough troops there to deal with it. Another couple of anti-aircraft units come in on the road. Uh, this is from the valley from the right hand side, it was smoked off. Uh, so they come in there and the anti-tank guns up on the hill. I don't know if they managed to destroy it or if it was a fire from the BMW that ended up destroying it but the guns immobilised it and then the wreck unit took out the other vehicle. So, quite pleased with how things are going on the right, are going on the right hand side. Um, everything's doing its job there. I had decided to bring in uh, an anti-aircraft unit of my own, uh, but I sent it too far forward and the smoke cleared before I managed to pull it back into cover. So we lost that to the Flak 41. On 
in the center, we've discovered another German machine gun in the forest. So I've got my mortars targeting that while the infantry tries to push for cover. And I'm sending the armored car round the flank of the forest. The Flat 41 was still smoked off. So we're able to get a decent weight of fire in on the machine gun. We start taking some fire from the town ahead of us, so I pull the infantry back into covering the forest while the B-18 and the mortars take out the MG-42. On the left, still no sign of any movement up in the high ground, uh, so I've sent my infantry to sweep in to clear out that town. I've got a machine gun in the forest there as well, uh, and the B-18 uh, is now able to focus on the town given that the German MG is falling back and the Valentine is safe to push forward again with the Flak 41 being smoked off. So you can see the, the town is strongly held and the Flak 41 is opened up again on the infantry so I get my mortars, I uh, brought in a third mortar here uh, so they're focusing now on the Flak 41 and I want to try and take it out rather than keep smoking it. But we've chased off the machine gun and we've also destroyed one of the units in the town and the mortars over here are now focusing on the uh, that's an, an MG 41 in the buildings there and my infantry is moving up to the edge of the woods to begin their sweep through the town. The Valentine in the centre has moved up behind this forest so it's now able to get in flank and fire uh, on anything else that might be in there. So our machine gun and the mortars uh, are enough to force that German machine gun to fall back. And up on top of the hill I'm able to push forward. Another German Panzer Grenadier unit appears and it engages my, uh, looks like a Hummer almost. Uh, uh, but it took it out with its Panzerfaust. Uh, but we've got, again, another two uh, armor personnel carriers and a B-10 up here, as well as the infantry. Two platoons of infantry advancing in that single German squad. So it quite likes forced to fall back. It did manage to pin down three of my own sections, though. On the left, there's definitely something up on that hill. Uh, the front line marker's not moving at all, so I'm sending a Valentine B-10 and a Recce section up to clear that out and I'm just going to push the rest of my units uh, up along that road. I've brought in some more infantry to support them. Uh, so we advance up the hill, keep the vehicles back. Uh, I don't think it's an anti-tank unit because I'm sure it would have opened up by now but they might have anti-tank weapons, maybe a Panzerfausts. But it turns out to be uh, another German MG uh, and they leave the cover of the house there and begin to fall back. So I'd send the recce troops up to keep the pressure on them. And as the my recce troops get into the building, we discover another German unit in there. It's another MG section. Uh, so they're out in the open, we're in cover. We've got armoured vehicles and we're able to take them out quite quickly. And then we push on against the other unit that's retreating, just to try and force the surrender. So that's all going on there, high ground. We've got uh, an infantry platoon quite well forward and we've got a couple of tanks heading up there. Uh, and I've also brought in a supply unit uh, because the mortars are going to... Uh, it's motorcycle mortars from the motorised battalion we've got in this flank, so they're going to get up forward quite quickly. Um, the German machine gun in the high ground tried to take cover in the buildings uh, and it was wiped out by our recce troops. And I now send the recce troops up to keep an eye out on the left flank. But you can see we're already quite far advanced towards that reinforcement point at the rear. Uh, so I'll have a scout car up in the high ground and a recce section in the forest next to it. Uh, just to give me good vision up there while the infantry move forward. And I'm bringing in some anti-tank guns to set up a blocking position up there as well. On the high ground, things seem to be clear, so we're focusing the mortar fire on the German mortar to the rear there. And I send another armoured personnel carrier forward along that road, but it spots infantry moving. It turns out just to be two men from the Panzer Grenadier section we engaged earlier on, but I'd started pulling the, uh, the vehicle back, which was a good thing because these guys, uh, a couple of heroes, they're quite well armed. Uh, one guy's got a Panzerfaust, the other guy's got an MG42. 
Uh, so they engage the infantry that I've got in that forest there. But uh, the way up there for my infantry is enough to see them off. Back at the town, there's obviously still units in there, and there's another German MG falling back towards the woods. So I'm pushing my infantry in the centre up to put pressure on while this infantry over here deals with uh, the Germans. So they set up in the open and engage my section that's in there, but I've got more troops pushing in towards the buildings. So we'll be able to get the MG in a crossfire. And we do that quite nicely. I think I'd also targeted the mortars and the MG before we destroyed it. So back on the right hand side, this high ground's almost or it is clear now, so I'm advancing up towards the edge of the forest to get a sight over the village or, or the town ahead of us, and we see more German units coming in. And they've got some flat units in the town. They begin open up in the, the infantry up there, so I pull them back from the edge of the forest. And we discover another flank 41 in the, the woods below us. But the Russians aren't scared of flank 41s. They just put their hand in their helmet and then get back to shooting at it. The German Panzer Grenadier section and another MG 42. I push out of the town here towards my advancing infantry and it's a case of who gets to the edge of the forest first. I've got the armoured car and the Valentine are still there to support them. Uh, but I end up, I order my infantry to pause where they are uh, because the Germans were clearly going to get into cover first. Uh, and they get into that forest and then they open up on the recce section that's across the uh, other side of the track there. Uh, and again, the MG is set up in the open, so I pull the Valentine and the armoured car over to make sure that they suppress the machine gun quickly. And then I start sending my infantry back up through the forest to deal with the Panzer Grenadier section. But you can see that German machine gunners are just as hard as Russian infantrymen. They don't care anything for heavy fire. But we do eventually manage to get enough they get fired on them to deal with them. Mostly from the mortars, obviously. Uh, so, with that, we've managed to destroy the machine gun and get the Panzer Grenadiers to fall back. The problem for the Panzer Grenadiers is that they can't fall back to the left because I've got infantry in the forest there. They can't fall back to the right because I've got infantry in the town. So, there's nowhere really for them to go and they end up surrendering. You can see in the background, my, I've got another couple of Valentines moving up along the road to the left. On the right, Germans bring in a grill in another Panzer Grenadier section, uh, and that's heading up towards the town, uh, or the small sort of village over there. Uh, so I decide to get the, the mortars to target that and also begin moving my anti-tank guns up into that forest ahead of them to try and get sort of vision on the grill as well. Uh, I've brought in an armoured car and a valentine on the right hand flank as well and I've got more infantry coming in there and the grill starts attacking the armoured car. The flank 41 over in the far right uh, spots my, my anti-tank guns moving forward and engages them so one gets into the forest ahead of it and the other one has a lucky escape and manages to pull back. So I retarget my mortars on the flat 41 and I send a couple of recce sections over to go up into the forest and try and deal with it and have the armoured car and I've got two valentines here now and I want them to take up position to try and take out that grill. Uh, recce sections are pushing up onto the hill where the armoured car is already sitting uh, but I think it's the grill over there that oh, there's a, a flat 41 in the background as well I think it's actually the Flight 41. I hadn't spotted at that point and I managed to take out the armoured car. The Reiki section pushes up onto the hill anyway. Over in the left flank I've got my other armoured car moved up forward and it spots another German motorcycle Reiki unit coming in. 
but the infantry from the forest engage that and take it out. And there's another couple of uh, German units back there as well, on the Panzergrenadier section and the Narecki section. But I've now got a couple of anti-tank guns, uh, I've got an anti-tank section, I've got three tanks I think, two tanks maybe, um, just maybe two tanks at this point. Uh, and the mortars all up here, so I've got a good force there to block any reinforcements coming in. And you can see that there's a artillery unit somewhere up in the background. But a German recce section had appeared on the high ground by the uh, my forces up here, and it was taken out with anti-tank gun in the forest. At the town in the centre, I've decided to have the pan the infantry platoon from the left-hand flank is going to push up onto that hill, link up with their, uh, their own company, and the other platoon will push in towards the centre. We're going to try and clear out the forest to the right-hand side. You can see that there's obviously still units in that forest, the way the front line marker is, but I'm going to try and uh, have a pincer attack on it, with the infantry coming down from the high ground and the others pushing in from the, the village to the left. It turns out to have a, a few German units in it, uh, nothing too strong, there's just the one uh, sort of full section there. Uh, so we start laying down fire from the advancing infantry on the left and we call in fire from the supporting mortars. The Germans flank 41 in that town uh, engages us though, uh, and there's also probably another drill or some uh, heavy artillery focusing on the infantry up in the hill. So it's a bit of a firefight just now, and I decided to get infantry on the hill moved out of that forest rather than sit there being a target and I start pushing them down towards this, uh, the German units. You can see another heavy artillery round coming in. Uh, I've brought more infantry up onto the high ground uh, and pushed down from there once it seems a bit safer. And I'm trying to pin down units in the town from the infantry I've got on the right hand side. So infantry here, coming down the hill, you can see the flat 41 shooting the infantry on the other side of the forest. Uh, but I'm keeping my vehicles back out of the way for now and relying on the mortars once again to help clear this forest. And now that the Germans are falling back, my own infantry can get back into some sort of cover, get away from the fire from the 88 mine. Which is good at destroying fences. So with that, uh, forest cleared out, uh, keep pushing my infantry to the right hand side forward uh, to take possession of it and the other infantry is going to push up towards the rear areas. I want to try and catch some of the German heavy artillery pieces. And I've got a lot of mortar fire coming in to suppress the units uh, that the Germans have in the town there. I'm shooting at uh, the Flak 41 in particular but I'm also shooting at the other anti-aircraft unit in front of it. And with that all happening, with units being suppressed and pinned down, I reckoned it was safe to send these vehicles charging across the open ground. Uh, so we've got a platoon of infantry in, uh, in trucks, we've got a half-track with a recce section. Oh no, that's a, another anti-aircraft section that's just been hit and brewed up. Uh, we've got an armoured car and there's a Valentine coming in as well. So. It turned out not to be quite as safe to cross as I'd thought. The suppression on the units didn't last quite as long as I expected it to. Fortunately the infantry all managed to get across there, it's quite safely. Uh, but the, the Valentine's advancing very slowly. And you can see that the tanks not actually taking fire from the Flak 41 in the town. Uh, so the suppression did work on that. The, the tank's taking fire from somewhere further to the, the right hand side of the screen. So that's over towards the village on the right hand side where they were advancing. Um, but anyway, so the tank kept pushing forward. Uh, looked like it was maybe going to be, get to safety. Uh, but then almost the exact spot where the anti aircraft half track was blown up, the tank was blown up as well. So we're beginning to suffer some losses now, but the, overall the uh, advance is still progressing well. Uh, on the right hand side, pushing up into this forest, uh, and the mortars again, I've fired a few rounds 
at the Flak 41 and then reposition the mortars. Um, we've got more infantry coming in on the right. Um, we just again lost uh, a personnel carrier there. But we spot a couple of German uh, pioneer sections and one of them manages to catch a recce section, flame throw it, force it to surrender. So on the right hand side I pull all that infantry back. I thought I want to get the infantry out of the forest away from the flamethrowers uh, and we'll let our mortars take care of them. So the infantry all pulls back out of the forest. Uh, mortars come in on the left hand side um, and the Flak 41 turns out still to be there. Panzer Grenadier unit appears on the right hand side so I pull the infantry right back. Uh, we really need um, the, the mortars to focus in on here and help clear that area out. So mortar fire comes in. Uh, it's reasonably effective. Uh, and once that's finished, it starts sending the infantry forward again. You can see there's another Panzer, uh, Panzer Grenadier unit there. I don't know if it's the same one or an additional one. And to the left hand side, you can see that the Germans have got units in around this town. Uh, so the grill is now firing at the Valentine, uh, which just sits there and takes the fire. And that's one of the things about the plain steel division in the normal speed that we are supposed to. Uh, the unit's AI is just so poor that you can't possibly micromanage, uh, or I can't possibly man micromanage every vehicle. Anyway, we advanced the infantry back up the hill. Managed to re-engage the uh, Panzer Grenadiers, but the Pioneer unit took out one of the armor personnel carriers. And it was on the slope to the right, and then it goes back, targets the infantry again. And the flame throw and gets off a couple of shots and takes out one of the sections. Once it's done that, the Pioneer unit starts moving to the right again. It's clearly going to go after the vehicle, so I decide to get the vehicle out of there. I don't want to lose another one. So I send that scurrying off, and it has a very narrow escape. But it does get to safety. It takes out a couple of trees on the way. Um, we're now pushing forward along this road. You can see there's another German unit coming towards us. Uh, I've got more units coming in. I'm bringing in a, a couple anti or an anti-tank gun, a couple of machine guns here, uh, and I'm beginning to advance up towards this town and uh, try and clear that out. Up on the hill, the uh, pioneer unit appears again, and, uh, and I think we must have managed to uh, hit the guy with the flamethrower because it blew up and took out the entire section. So just back over on the left hand side, uh, the armoured car up on the high ground spotted a German half-track uh, sitting up on the brow of the hill there, an anti-aircraft unit. Uh, took some fire from a tank off to the right hand side uh, and the tank managed to destroy it. We also spotted a howitzer, uh, so we've got a Valentine trying to take that out. And I've got my mortars to target it as well. These ubermensch decide that they don't want to sit there and take fire, so the two of them are going to manhandle this big gun, try and get it to safety. They did manage it as well. So back in the centre, uh, we're advancing quite smoothly now through here. Uh, we've got one unit moving up to the left, heading to the rear, looking for more howitzers. And to the right, we're pushing in on this town, where it was quite heavily defended. And we had the anti-aircraft unit with a Flak 41. Uh, up here, there is still units somewhere, obviously, keeping the front line marker uh, in roughly the same position. Uh, so I've got a couple of platoons up there, a couple of vehicles, 
We're just going to keep advancing, try and push in through those trees. You can see we've got some advances going on up on the left hand side, that's up on the high ground. So over on the left, another pioneer unit had appeared in the forest. Uh, and there's no way I was going to let that uh, do any damage to us. So the mortars, almost blank, point blank range, were called in. We've now we've got four, five tanks up here. And we've got a couple anti-tank guns. Uh, and we've got a couple of mortars. We are a bit short of infantry, but I've got more on the way. And this, these infantry were moving up from the town and encountered another anti-aircraft half-track uh, which is can be very dangerous against infantry you can see straight away it takes out one section and I start to pull the other sections back um, but we've got a Ricky section on the other side of the track that had advanced up and that manages to take out the half-track with its bazooka So, we begin pushing up onto this high ground to the rear. Uh, you can see a, there is a howitzer in the trees to the sort of left rear. Uh, there's a Panzer Grenadier unit pushing towards us. Uh, I've got one section in the trees, just keeping an eye out just now. Uh, but I'm going to have plenty of troops up there to deal with the Germans. You can also see there's a German unit, and two German units to the right hand side. So again, we've got plenty of firepower up there to deal with them. The unit is advancing across the cornfield, caught in the open, forced to fall back. But the howitzer that was manhandled earlier is back in action. And we've got infantry pushing forward with support from the tanks. And the tanks uh, they're a bit conflicted. One of them shooting at the German pioneers, the other one shooting at I think it was infantry um, that had appeared in, from the reinforcement point. So they're forcing, uh, forcing back down the hill. But I think we've still got enough weight of numbers up there to advance forward. We've got some ersatz trooping in the sort of farm to the rear. Then another unit appears uh, and the sort of delays are advance. And again, Valentines, they've run out of high explosive. So they're not really contributing too much to the advance. And we get bogged down. Looking over to the right hand side, uh, there's units falling back now from the, the village in the far right. We've got units moving out from the centre towards that town. Uh, and on the left hand side we've got our armoured car and Valentine moving into position to try and cut off any uh, escape. The infantry is pushing forward nicely there, there's not much uh, resistance now. But there's still uh, some units coming in. And over in the valley to the right, the Flak 41 was still alive and it took out our BA-10 and another unit almost took out one of the M2s. So get my Valentines into cover. And we've also got a howitzer lobbing shells into that area as well. But I'm pushing my infantry now through the forest towards uh, the... There's a small village or farm up in the high ground. So we need to go and clear that out. And I've got the Valentines in to cover that road that leads up to the reinforcement point. We've cleared the town to the left. Uh, but the Valentines move up into position to cover the road. I hadn't noticed that the Germans had brought in a Stug and the Stug sees the Valentines before they have any idea that it's there. And one shot the Valentine. So I could have left that Valentine there but I wanted to try and get it into cover so I pulled it across to the other side of the road and it has a couple of shots at the Stug. They exchange fire and it stops but it turns out not to be in cover. Turns out to be dead. So lost two stugs, uh, two Valentines took short order to the stug. 
uh, and the infantry up on the hill. Um, trying to get that to engage the Stug. And this guy, the bazooka, I thought, is he ever going to fire? Is it going to be suppressed? Um, but you don't need to worry about it because his colleague in the other section takes out the Stug. And we can keep pushing forward. So, on the left hand side, uh, the Howitz are still in action away at the back. And there's a few German infantry units around now, and my advance has pretty much stalled. Uh, the Germans are just now pushed so far back on their resupply points uh, that they're able to mount a stiff resistance. And I don't have, as I said earlier, the ammunition for the Valentines to help with the assault. So I did lose a couple of supply trucks. I brought in. I think four or five across the battlefield, um, but the one that was on the left hand side I lost, uh, which was really damaging because it couldn't resupply these tanks. So I'm still trying to push across this open ground, trying to clear that farm, uh, but there's just there are too many German troops there now, and we lost one of our own sections to howitzer fire. And even the infantry are now beginning to run out of ammo. The Germans are just getting more units into position, so uh, we do get bogged down there. In the centre, we're still pushing forward, still hoping to try and locate howitzers. Uh, and you can see that the, there, are, there must be units in the forest ahead of us there, uh, but they're just hidden from view. Uh, I sent two armoured cars up this hill to the left. Uh, and again, they're looking for any German artillery they can find, but we don't spot any. Uh, and I've got the infantry advancing on the right hand side, we've got more infantry reinforcements pouring in. Uh, but by this point, uh, far too many reinforcement points to spend and nothing left to spend them on. All my armour was committed, all my mortars were committed. Uh, so it was just a case of trying to push infantry forward. Over on the right, we're advancing uh, and relying again on mortar fire to take out some anti-aircraft units uh, that appeared over there. And we're pushing in towards the town finally, but there are still some units holding the, the right hand flank. But overall, we've pushed up well uh, on the left hand side, did get bogged down, didn't manage to take out any artillery, but overall the advance was successful. Uh, and again we got the victory. The mortars turned out to be really key for this battle. Uh, obviously up against a lot of German support weapons, uh, machine guns and flak units and flak 41s, uh, we did need uh, the art our own artillery support. 